Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome to this wonderful episode of Church in Your House. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for the understanding you have given unto us. Lord, to walk according to your dictates. Today we have come again to receive from you. Lord, we pray for this understanding shall manifest in a higher dimension. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are still celebrating the uh, spirit of Easter. And uh, there is one thing I want to zero in today. When you look at what is happening among we believers, I could say there is so much pollution in the church. Pollution in the church. There's one thing that is so pressed in before Jesus ascended, you know, after his resurrection. Let me just read one portion here. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. It says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Power. He sent power. He sent us power. After the resurrection, hallelujah, the believers were given power. And we almost operate in that power. Matthew 28, 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. See, you see, continuously like that, we begin to hear God giving us power. But what is common today is fear. We have pumped in fear through our messages. That, I mean, in various dimensions that the people under us no longer see themselves as people of power. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Many people are operating with the spirit of fear. And it has affected several things. In fact, the good thing we used to do in those days, we, we, we find it difficult to do it now without getting into trouble. I remember in those days, if you see a neighbor's child wearing tattered clothes, and you have uh, better ones at home. Maybe part of the one your children own. It could be new, it could be used one, but still in good condition. You could reach out to that and give it to your neighbor's child. These days, they won't use it. They will read many because their mind has been polluted. They say they will want to take their uh, destiny. You want to take their destiny. Which destiny? It, 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 it's, so, it's so common right? because the mind has been polluted. Something happened some years back. We had this teacher in our school. I love the way he dressed. He would wear shirt and put tie. Many times I would just look at him and say, oh, you're looking good. I didn't know that it was not going well with him. Praising him for dressing well it was not going well. His mind has been polluted. A Christian, born again Christian. So one day, I decided that, oh, I, I'm going to bless this man. And I reached into my wardrobe. I had ties, brand new ties, many that I brought from America. And I reached out to the best, brand new, best that was given unto me. Even if you see the packaging, you know that this tie was very, very expensive. It, it was the most expensive tie I had there. And I picked it up. I handed it over to this this teacher, primary school teacher. After some days, he came back and uh, reprimanded me and warned me that I shouldn't talk anything about his dressing again. That since I've been talking and giving him time, he has been under attack. Can you imagine that? A Christian saying that, his mind has been polluted. He could not attract God's blessing. And it's as a result of all those uh, messages we are pumping on the pulpit, message of fear. This, this is not why Jesus died. He laid down his life for you and I so that we can walk 
in the understanding, with sound mind, we walk in the spirit of power, on the spirit with the spirit of love. He had conquered the devil. Why must we be living in fear? There was a time one lady, young lady, fine girl, was brought to me, and uh, they had a good job. They had massive sore that refused to heal, and she was not diabetic. Then, before I even said anything, I mean, they brought her so that I could pray. Before anything, he started saying, I have been to many places, and everywhere I go, they will say, it's my mother that is responsible. By the time I query her, I, I realized that she had believed all of those things. And she happens to be a Christian, born again, talk, talking woman. How can you say it's your mother? Anywhere you go. And it was not the herbalist that she went to. She went to meet people like prophets, uh, apostles, big, big people that, that claim to be doing deliverance. Instead of praying and casting out that spirit that afflicted her, they were adding to her problem by making her to hate her mother. Pollution in the church. So I, tried, I began to talk to her. Your mother didn't know anything about what we were going through. But the mind you have against her could be a problem for you. So what you need is to first of all repent and find a way to, to, to go and appease that woman. Because you have told lie on her and she didn't know, she didn't, she's not responsible at all. But because of what you have done towards her, God can't answer your prayers. Go and buy fine stuff and go and give it to your mother and you will see a change. But... Will she believe me? No. People like believing rotten things. Error. Can you imagine somebody going to church and they say the mother was the one bewitching him and he went back, carried cutlass and killed the mother. Where is the resurrection power that is given unto us? You and I, if we say yes to Jesus, what we are saying is that we have the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and, and the spirit of a sound mind. We must not allow anybody to deceive us. We must not embrace this pollution. It's everywhere. Before coronavirus came, a number of people cannot shake their neighbor. Not because of fear of coronavirus. You no, know, they say, ah, I don't want them to take my destiny. What's in your destiny that somebody wants to see by shaking your hand? This thing has, I mean, put, I, 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 I lack the word to really describe what is happening. And it's very painful to me because, look, if you are used to just doing good and helping others, helping people now becomes much more difficult because you don't know what you will do that will turn to another thing. I that I'm speaking, I have helped and help made me to be arrested on gunpoint and taken to police station. When the DPO listened to my story, he turned against my accuser. I mean, I passed with, my wife and I had passed through a number of things for being taken to court for helping. When the judge listened to the story, he turned against the, the same people. So because their heart has been polluted, they could not attract God's blessing. And it's as a result of the terrible messages that are going on on the pulpit. This one will come, I'm a deliverance minister. The word of God set free. You shall know the truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. The truth of the word set free. So there is no special, special person that I say, okay, my assignment is deliverance. It's the word that will deliver. But if we go about, we just look at somebody and begin to make some pronouncement. This person is responsible. That one is doing this. Uh, don't do this. That, that, that is not the gospel. We have power. Jesus has given us power. Let us enjoy that power. Let's walk in that power. Let's walk with the spirit of power and get out of all of this pollution. Any small thing you say, attack, attack. Am I saying that uh, the devil is not attacking people? He is doing that, but when you say yes to Jesus, you, oh, the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You become untouchable. They will try, but they will fail. You are not to walk under them. They will be afraid of this, afraid of that. Eh? <laughs> A number, some simple thing will happen. Okay, let me give you an example. Somebody traveling to the village, travel to the village. And on coming back, Preparing to come back, he lifted heavy load into his own car. Then, because he's not been used to that, they mush you. 
uh, reacted. After two days, he began to feel pain and hooked him by the rib side only for him to say, hey, they attacked me in the village. I'm dying. Oh, the common, common word, rob, eh? or aboniki, you use it to rob the place and, uh, and you, it's over. But he had, you will read meaning to everything, everything will read meaning. Look, I'm still going to have a part two of this because well, I cannot exhaust it within the short time I have. We need to get out of all of this nonsense, get out of the pollution. And uh, we should not pollute. And we preacher, including myself, we have the responsibility to speak the only thing that we hear God talking to us. Don't say a thing that is contrary to the will of God. Because the word that comes out of our mouth shapes the life of multitude that are listening to us. We should not pollute their lives. We should not destroy their lives. Many people are depending on the word that, that we are preaching. And so we should be mindful of what we preach. There's so much pollution. And it is my prayer that God will, will, will help us and deliver us. Let us remember that the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary must not be wasted. He, he, he died and he rose and ascended unto heaven and he gave us power against unclean spirit to cast it out. Power to cast out devil. Power, great power to destroy the forces of hell. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you will deliver us from this great pollution that is so common in your church today. Lord, forgive us our sin, all of us that have preached one thing or the other that is contrary to your will. Instead of preaching power and pumping power into the life of people, we are pumping our fear. So, Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Let that be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.